Hey everybody, well, Joseph here, and today, sorry about this light, you're also gonna hear some beeping in the background, that is our entrance alarm, uh, for lack of better words. Um, today, we are going to show you a project that we have in, that is a for flex gate repair. What it is is a special cable that is pretty much ready to go. A soldering jig, holding jig, and a cutting jig. And the idea of this is that we are making the cable a little bit longer, um, which should be pretty standard knowledge of the issue that we're having. Right. So where are we going to start? Is going to be the complete job from zero. So I think we're going to switch cameras now to a desktop camera. Huh. There we go. That light's on. Let's start. So, sorry about any of the mess or the unscriptedness, but I just kind of decided that, oops, I was going to do this right now. Oh, where's my pedal up one? Actually, my pedal up two. A black? Black. Screws. Okay. First thing is first, battery. Are we on screen? We are. Good. So, probably could practice a little bit more to actually have it scripted. But I just wanted to give you the raw, where we're at now, view. And the whole process of what it will be. So do we actually have to take off this? me a moment here and I'll show you the issue that we are having but you probably already know if you're watching this um, the issue is that the flex cables are a little bit too short and that causes uh, a little bit too much tension on the very edge of the flex cable where it's solid and plugs into the board and has a metal support on it so instead of it flexing like that it flexes more like that <laughs> that's no good so, unplug our screen. Don't need to, but I like to also take this one off. We do have to unplug Wi-Fi. I mentioned that we have a bit of street noise today. It's the time of day where our thermal camera, movement camera, is going off with huge shadows going across our parking. We have a lot of buses come down this road. Oh, get this little guy out, because he's closest. I'll actually use the right tool this time. Unplug Wi-Fi. We're not actually gonna remove this all the way, um, the Wi-Fi portion of it. We're just gonna pull it out a little bit. Now comes this little black screwdriver. I just had you there. All these little guys. Wow, that wasn't there hard. These are all in there pretty hard. I'm always a little nervous to put them in this tight again. I guess if I had the torque wrench, I could, but I have seen a couple come back from the local Apple store, Apple Authorized Service Repair Center. They had heads broken off, and I think that they have the right tool. Okay, before we actually remove this, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the flex cable for the backlight. That is bad. And show you its failure mode. Okay. Are there any other screws? There's going to be one, two. We can take this screw off. It's not really going to matter. Oh, T3. It's not really going to matter that much. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to take a look at it now, real quick. 
organize the screws how you like. Um, big microscope. Move that. So, what happens here? See that? You can see that. Okay, so this flex cable right here. This is the back leg flex. You can kind of see right now that it's a little cracked right there. As we open it up more, it's going to be more obvious. Do you see that sharp edge on it? Focus. So, you can see the protrusion right here. That's where it's not doing too hot. Over here it's okay. Over there it's okay. But on this one, just happened to crack right there in the middle of it. And that's no good. You can see that it is pulling it pretty tight. There's not really any slack here sticking out still. And the idea is that we're going to make it so there's slack sticking out there still. Close this up again. Change to desktop, no, desktop, there we go. Can we still kind of see this? We can kind of see it. I'm not used to doing this backwards. And this is a client's computer, so I'm not going to try to learn how to do it backwards right now. So this view's a little far away. Um, Okay, T5. Stick you in. Where are we gonna stick you guys? I'm gonna stick you guys up there. There's that beep I was talking about. Three. I think this is already actually at an Apple authorized service provider. So this guy is now free. The TCON board is what this is called. Um, we need to free up the TCOM board, and then we are also going to take out this antenna partially. Because our tool clips onto the board, or the screen, I should say. So, that's out of the way. We need to move it around the TCOM board a little. So the TCOM board is now free. Now all I'll do is I'll tape this antenna up. Yeah. Anything to save a couple of minutes, right? Who likes to weave the antenna cables back? I don't. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get this out. This backlight cable. Um, you know what? I'm going to demonstrate what I'm doing here now on the microscope because I don't have a better desk camera. Um, so I loosened up one screw and the other screw. Move that to the side. I'm just going to unplug our backlight cable. And now I need that to go underneath of it for me. Tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. That guy's free. Perfect. And that is really what we need. Just this cable. Now, what is this going to do for us? Now we're gonna go ahead and rotate everything over to the side. Get another position. Can we see this? You can kind of see it here in this little camera. Jig, soldering jig, cutting jig, everything jig. I guess we could clean this. That would not be a bad idea. Clean this hinge out a little bit. Pull it out. Okay. This jig is designed to go in and pretty much center itself right there. That's its spot. So, how does that look? Well, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Right on. Oh, wait. Is that beautiful? Yes, that's beautiful. Okay. Now, for the time being, we have some wedges we're going to stick in. And those wedges are going to hold this soldering jig and whatever you may call this jig in place. Perfect. And now what you're going to notice here is that right there. You see how there's a difference between this hole, on that hole, the end of this, and that? That's how much longer we're going to make this. How? What a wonderful question. So first, we are going to 
take our soldering jig, stick that on there. We're gonna mark it a little. Where is a razor blade? I don't really like this one, this one's a little dirty. There we go, I find that I really like using the number 24s for this. So, let's get this down here. Somewhere from there to higher and there. Okay, oops. Um, I am actually gonna rotate this again. I'm sorry, I lied to you. Right, there goes all the screws. Good thing I actually kind of have this model memorized by now. I'm gonna go ahead and put these off to a side. Mm -hmm. You and you were the only two that jumped off. Excellent. And why am I moving this? Because now we actually kind of have to prepare this cable. This is the part that you need a little skill to do. We try to make it pretty easy. So. You see this? Good, you see this. Now when I do this, I like to, um, let's see, let me take a look here at the camera real quick to see how it looks with the image. Zoom in, focus, there we go. Okay, so you see how they're all kind of darkish copper? They still have a little coating on it. I like to go a little bit more until they're actually shiny. It takes off all the glue and all the coating. Now at this point, you know what, if you tried, yes, you can damage it. So, be careful, be gentle. It's not a bad idea at this point also to tin it. And so uh, I use a micro pencil for this. I use 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe, yes, seven. 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Get a little Amtec. Uh, get a little solder. Wow, my hands are shaking. I haven't recorded a video in quite a while, guys. So this is at a temperature where the solder does not necessarily even want to melt. We're using a low temperature because we do not want to damage the flex cable. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. And I'm only going to tint these small little ones over here. Okay. That's really all I want to see. That's because the other ones will take a lot of solder. You don't necessarily want there to be a huge glob of solder sitting on the outside traces because that's going to make it not want to lay down very flat. So, we've got that. Now we have what's called the cutting jig. Bump that up there, make it nice and tight. Zoom out so you can see more what I'm doing. Use this cutting jig on it, like that. There we go, it's cut. So, off the old. This guy likes to spring up. Still working on a good little solution for that, so it doesn't. We are going to take our replacement flex that has the copper exposed on the back also, slightly. And then I'm going to find my, this one, holder. Come down. There 
we go. Let's slide that into our position. And what you'll see is that twist it a little, and take a little poke and a prod. But it should be pretty much lined up. Okay, this one, it's not very lined up, is it? That's not good. What are you doing, Jake? Going to have to revise the design of this one. I just printed this one up this morning to test out. Okay, there we go. Now we are lined up how we should be. Perfectly. This is what we want to see. Okay. I'm going to take a little flex. I'll stick that down on it. And honestly, what I like doing here is I like starting with the outsides. So, soldering in. We have a little solder on it. It turns out we do not have a little solder on it. Sides are done. Should get cleaned up a little. Because I don't want that to. Oh, wait, that does touch. Well, okay. These don't though. Now, let's go over these guys in the middle. My soldering iron sucked up most of the lead. Now, because these, let me pull some of this over. Come on, there we go. Because these flex cables actually have a little um, copper exposed on the back, these are actually soldering on the front and the back, which is the idea. They are tricky to make, I'll tell you that, but that's yeah, okay. I'm a little bit more solder on that one. We are still perfecting a way to be able to manufacture these in, I should say, bulk. This way, all of your lines are connected. And it's taken about 18 minutes so far. Let's clean off. Now, the one last step that I like to do here is actually add, where's my alcohol? There it is. Um, add some glue to it. And with that glue, we also glue on a little piece of um, Kaplan tape. And I find this is going to be important for two reasons. One, it actually helps with the only stress that this connection will have on it. This does not have any flexion. This has a, um, what do you call it? When you pull on it, stress, not flexion stress, but the brain not working. That kind of flex on it. And because of that, it shouldn't separate. It's not going to be under fatigue from bending, but it is going to be rubbing up against something underneath of this. Um, which over 10,000 screen opens might become bare metal. Maybe, maybe the solder will wear through something. Or maybe a piece of dirt will fall into it or something conductive. We want to make sure that there is no possibility of that causing damage. So, I tried to make a video before and this was the worst part of it. So let's guess here. Actually, we're not going to guess. We're going to stick it onto the old one. 
just how we wanted to cut it. Now, ideally, this will also be included, this little piece of pre-cut whatever it is that we're going to include. Uh, if it's going to be a tape or if it's going to be a... Well, there's another material that I found for that was really good. Something quick and simple. Put a glob on it. I'm gonna grab the microscope for this so you can see a little bit better. Oh, I made this cutout big enough. Tweezers. Hmm. Of course, it's going to stick to my tweezers. Okay, there's something to be desired. So, with the piece of tape I cut, but we have the idea here. Also helps round out anything that might have been a little sharp on it still. We're gonna clean it with a little to get that excess glue off. Because we don't want it to be sticky. This needs to slide a little. And we're done. Go ahead, remove our holder, zoom out. Now what we're going to do is feed that right back under our T-con board. Plug it in. Cool. Now we're going to begin assembling again. Oh, let's get all the screws are mixed up. And have fun with that. Okay. Move that out. Let's go to the big desk. Big desk. And then we will show a final result as well what we are looking at. I have a client showing up really late, so I am kind of waiting. But I figured I'd be able to knock this out pretty quick, making a video. Now, as anyone <laughs> that has recorded a video before knows, it takes a lot longer to try to record something like this than it actually takes to do it. So. Oh, okay. Idiot. All the same length. But it doesn't work if LCD cables blow it. 
Any damage there? No, thank goodness. Very easy to crush a cable. If it's underneath something, you're being impatient and just shoving screws in. Wondering, why is this screw so hard to go in? Let's just tighten it down. Maybe it'll fit how it should. Bad idea, don't do it. That time of day. Okay, we've got those two. We've got this little T3. Love it. Okay, plug this screen in. Now, what we're going to show you real quick, without putting all the other screws in, is some functionality and its end result. Um, we have everything screwed in that we need to sit still to be able to show this. And firstly, what I'd like to show is with a big microscope. This is the cable now. You can see it has what looks like quite a bit of extra cable versus that. This one only goes to about there. This one actually goes underneath of it. Now, I'm gonna to go to open it up. Open that a little bit. Take a look. Are we in focus? Yep. Now when we open it up all the way, that is 100% open. That's more like where this side was closed, or like what it was before closed. So the force that would be applied there is really limited a lot more now than when we close it. We're working on making this so it does not touch anything throughout the whole process. Uh, where are we at? There we are. So close it and Yep, it is still floating there, just barely. And, well, let's turn this on. Let's see this work. Battery screw. Is there any other screws I should put in now? Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna put the screen screws in so I don't have to. Try not to drop a screw. The little T2 screws are easy enough to do. Because they're far enough away from the board that if you drop it, it falls into the fan or something. Not, not onto CPU MOSFETs and coils. Or t board. So this is my first time using my AirPods to record audio on my iPhone separate from my OBS. We'll see how that works out. I might even use some video from my iPhone. So if you see some terrible shots in portrait mode. Wait, portrait mode? Portrait mode. Tall, like we're recording in 1996. That's why. Go ahead. that in there. All right, I guess I could have shown how backlight wasn't working on this before, but I think pretty much everyone realizes that <laughs> What I just did to it would cause the image to not show up because I just packed off the backlight cable. Okay. Let's get the big desk on. <laughs> what a beautiful Apple logo. Well, let's not show that. Uh -huh. Oh, what was your password? I'll log in real quick. Well, yeah. No, give me a moment. I'll log in real quick and not show his username. Actually, sticky note. Where is a sticky note? 
The screen needs to be cleaned anyways. Sticky note. We'll use huge sticky note. Can you still see his face through that? No, good, okay, I can. And backlight. Of course, backlight isn't gonna let us change it when we're not in the operating system, is it? Okay, I'm gonna go get the password. What is your ticket number? 5 Okay, are you going to have anything sensitive on your desktop that I should not show? Thirty-one minutes and forty seconds, not doing bad so far. I wonder how loud these picked that up. Brightness control, okay, and please don't show anything too, too sensitive. Take this off. Um, wow, that's a lot of windows opening up. We're gonna go ahead and do a new window. Um, no, we don't want that. We want a new private window. Well, if you can see my face lighting up, that's because all the windows are opening up and the backlight is working so well. Okay, good. I don't think anything else is going to pop up now. So, got Google here. We've got a brightness that actually works now. Got beautiful. Yes. We can actually go ahead and open up the screen all the way. Ooh, be careful with that. Close it, open it, good. We're good to go. Kind of what we expected, right? So, I was gonna plug in Wi-Fi. That is our FlexGate kit that is going to be in the market soon. Um, there's still a couple of things that we want to fine tune with it. That has to do with helping hold down that flex that doesn't spring back up. Um, as well as that little alignment issue that we saw there at the beginning, we're gonna address that to really try to make sure that it's being held just where you want it to be. You might have to poke it with some tweezers to get it lined up, but the idea is that no matter how shaky your hands are of the day, you can get this soldered and done, knocked out within half an hour. You know, if you do quite a few of these and you're not making video on it, 15 minutes or so. Um, and be on your merry way. Knowing that the cable is longer, you're doing a consistent job because while well, you have the holder that is making it the right length every time when you're putting it back together to solder it. Um, and well, it locks into the screen, you're, you're getting a consistent result. And for us, that's what's really the most important. Um, we want to be able to offer the exact same quality, the high quality every time. Uh, which is going to be great for our warranty, knowing that these won't be coming back. Um, and I say that and I'm thinking the camera side. We're working on a solution for the camera side as well. We have had a couple clients that have had failures on the camera side. I don't think they fail as much because the um, traces are actually a little bit thinner and copper is a work, or a, um, work hardening metal. So the more you bend it, the harder it becomes, so it will become brittle at a point. So this happens when you're doing HVAC things or you're working with copper piping. Uh, after you've bent it so many times, you really have to re-anneal it. You have to heat it up with your blowtorch until it's glowing a little bit and then it becomes soft again so you can mold it. Same thing with gold. Um, a lot of the conductive metals are like that. And that's also why if you're doing a little jumper, you bend it back and forth a whole bunch of times and then it will snap off pretty easy. It's work hardening, it's just becoming hard and brittle. Um, so, thicker traces in the cable itself, I believe, enable the backlight side to crack a lot sooner and easier than the other side, even though the camera side does have some thick, thick traces in it as well. 
Um, we just haven't seen as much of it. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you like what you saw. And, well, hey, have a wonderful day.